your big city public safety workers experience an awful lot. Fire. To the car wreck. The shootings. To the rescues. The repetition of that just beats in your mind like a drum. I've been doing this for 40 years now, and the ones that were really horrible always stay. It's just not normal stuff. Mentally, physically, the guys are burning out. Have you ever in your career attended the funeral of a firefighter who's committed suicide? Yes. He was suffering, and we knew the incident. And we and the fire service have gone to funerals over the years many, many times that we knew the person had taken their own lives, and it wasn't spoken about. Your body is breaking down. I think those dark voices take over. Their hard drive's full. If you listen to what the firefighters are saying, get us help. For me, I know that I'm a different person once I've written. It's wind therapy. It's help. Bikers are bad. That stigma's still here. We need each other. We can survive with each other. They take us away from each other, you know, someone's not gonna survive. When they see us coming up the street, some bad guys get out their way. And firefighters, nothing else. And the motorcycle is my medicine. Pan, Rod, Jeff in Las Vegas, good morning. Morning, Jeff. Morning. Such a thrill to talk to you today about Florian's Nights. What a powerful documentary. Uh, very eye-opening, very relevant, uh, much needed for awareness. And Pan, how did you hear about the Knight story? How did this all begin? The Florian's Nights um, first chapter was founded in Burnaby, British Columbia, which is a suburb just outside Vancouver. And so I'm based in Vancouver, Canada. And uh, I, I had a local company there bring the story to my attention and said, we've got some firefighters in our neighborhood who ride motorcycles as a coping strategy for PTSD. And I just thought, man, I really haven't thought about firefighting, you know, intimately like this th since 9-11, maybe, you know, where I really, and I, you know, I'm just a kid at that time, but, you know, I really hadn't thought about it in a while. And I thought, wow, this might be a real opportunity on the back of a bike to then be go to the front lines of some of the most historic fire departments in the world and um, show audiences something that maybe they haven't thought about in a while. And that is the the day-to-day -day, uh, life of firefighters. And, and Rod, you're a retired uh, fire battalion. And uh, most people never think of what happens after first responders and firefighters finish a mission and the consequences afterward. And they, they're all about being in the moment, I guess. Uh, how do you deal with such stress and, and your fellow firefighters and first responders? Obviously, Florian Knights is a bike club, but uh, how do most most first responders deal with this stress? Uh, well, I think there was uh, two, two layers to that question. One was how do firefighters, if I heard correctly, deal with retirement? And uh, the other part of the question was how do they cope with their job while they're on it? As, as with respect to the retirement, uh, I've been retired six years now, and uh, it was very difficult, very difficult. Uh, even though the job is the source of the PTSD, uh, the sense of belonging and a purpose in one's life with firefighters is it's off the charts. So when that's taken away due to mandatory retirement, uh, you better be prepared for it. And many of the, the guys, when they retire, as they go out the door, uh, they're in tears. Uh, some of them are for their tears out of just leaving the job. Uh, but for a lot of the guys, the tears are, it's almost like the pain is just coming out now. And I know that when I retired, I was lost. I was in, I was in a dark place. I already had 
experience of PTSD, uh, but it got worse when I left the department. And Pan, tell me about gaining the trust of the firefighters and first responders. You're out to make a documentary. This is extremely personal subject matter. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a double-edged sword, you know, something for awareness, but also very traumatic and reliving these experiences. How did you gain access and trust to your subjects? Yeah, this is, it's really interesting. This is a, a question that we're asked uh, a lot um, <laughs> yeah. because for so long, I, f I felt like these, this subject matter was not something that firefighters showed to the public. You know, it was dealt with in-house for a very long time. Um, and so we were walking into unprecedented territory which was not only do we want to talk to guys about this, but we want to film it and then Matt and then produce a movie out of it. And that was a whole lot of emails back and forth between city officials, between departments, between the fire department and the members. Um, but the one thing we had that was so unique was that we were coming in and I've said this before through the lens of healing and that's the motorcycle. That was the positive element of this, that we weren't just going to tell a story about guys who were suffering because of the job, but we were going to tell a story about guys who recognized that the job impacted them and then sought out a solution. And so that kind of, that evolution into a positive healing narrative was where we, I think, gained the trust of a lot of firefighters. And I mean, it is what it is. We were, we were brought in to the Detroit Fire Department, to the Vancouver Fire Department, to the Toronto Fire Department, and to the Fire Department of New York to talk about mental health. I don't think that's ever been done. An international cross-departmental movie like this, I don't think it's really ever been done. And uh, we, were, we were welcomed because we came in through the lens of healing, and that's, that's the motorcycle. And, and Rod, you'll have to forgive me, but I think as most people, when they ask your experiences, they kind of romanticize it. You know, you're heroes. And we want to hear about your experiences. But it, after watching this documentary and hearing this testimony, it is no different than a, a war vet from Afghanistan or Iraq or World War II with the PTSD. So uh, that people need to be more sensitive when asking you these kind of things. Um, and I was wondering, is that something that you deal with? Because people are fascinated by firefighters and about the, the exciting job they do saving lives. But, you know, we don't think about your well-being, and, except in the moment. Well... The romance around my profession and some of the calls I went on uh, when a civilian asked me that question, uh, it even could be a family friend or something like that. Uh, the romance ends very soon if I do get into the graphics of the, the situation or the call that was uh, attended. Uh, they don't really want to hear the second story. So that part of it, uh, uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's that curiosity that that's part of being a human being. But when the reality is, is stated to the person, they don't really want to hear it. Like I said, the next story, uh, how do I deal with questions like that? Uh, not very well and usually avoided them much like the, the vets, you just avoid them or you don't talk about it. You say, I don't really have anything to, to, to say. And, uh, it ends there. So it's avoidance, really. Well, it's, it's going to be kind of hard to avoid with the 20th anniversary of 9-11, which I'm sure is going to bring back, you know, not only civilian you know, stories, but also the first responders. And uh, I, I was just wondering, is there a call to action that, that someone can do? Say the average viewer watching the Florian Knights and they want to help. How can they help their first responders? Is there something that we can do? Uh, from my perspective, uh, what the public can do is, first of all, watch the documentary and, and don't let it end at just the first responders. It's anybody in your, your sphere of influence, be it family, friends, uh, professional, peer groups. Uh, PTSD, is, it goes across all those venues. Uh, but if, if it's firefighter specific, what the public can do is make sure they're elected officials, because we are employees of a civic government, make sure the elected officials do take the steps necessary to have in place the infrastructure that deals with ongoing mental illness amongst first responders. 
Well, gentlemen, Pan, what a powerful documentary. Uh, Rod, thank you for your service. I, I appreciate you both joining me today. And uh, let's talk again soon. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.